Hi everyone, welcome to this video. So, I've been doing the channel now for two years, or almost two years anyway, I think it must be about 22 months, and I've never done a tutorial on how to wire up and code, and use, in fact, a temperature and humidity sensor. And that's a bit strange, because when people start messing with Arduino, usually this is the first project, or one of the first projects that they do, and the reason for that is because it's very simple. Anyway, so today I'm going to do a video on that. So how to use a temperature and humidity sensor, how to wire it up, how to code, and how to use it. Okay, so let's have a look and uh, see what we can find out about this. It's protected by a plastic case which has got loads of holes in, and presumably there are one or two sensors underneath that case. It has four pins, which we can guess that they are VCC, ground, um, data out or analog out or something. I think this is digital. Let's have a look at the back. So the back says AO Song, or presumably that's the brand, AO Song. Then it says NA, which presumably means name, and it's the HT11. Then it says DC 3.3 to 5.5 volts, which is its operator voltage, which is microcontroller voltage. Then it says U1, 20 to 95% RH, which Presumably that means relative humidity, I think that's its measuring capability. U2 says 0 to 50 degrees centigrade, yep, presumably that's um, its measuring uh, capacity again, 0 to um, 50 degrees centigrade. Then it says U3, which is plus minus 5% RH and plus minus 2 degrees centigrade. So there are obviously its tolerances, and um, oops, yeah, there are obviously its tolerances of what it can work in. Um, and what's that down there? SN1605 blah blah blah, that's its serial number. So, um, let's have one quick look before we start wiring it up and stuff. And there it is. Right, I've got the data sheet for this thing, and let's have a quick look. DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor features a temperature and humidity sensor complex with a calibrated digital signal output. Okay. Introduction. By using the exclusive digital signal acquisition technique and temperature and humidity sensing technology, it ensures high reliability and excellent long-term stability. This sensor includes a resistive type, resistive type, okay, cool, humidity measurement component, and an NTC temperature measurement component and it connects to a high performance 8-bit microcontroller 8-bit microcontroller okay that's interesting so it has two sensors and an onboard micro, uh, microcontroller 8-bit so what that means is that it has a resolution um, or it can resolve to one of 256 different um, values so yeah so the um, sensing range is split out, split to 256 different parts. So anyway, it's a bit irrelevant really, but anyway. Uh, offering excellent quality, fast response, anti-interference ability and cost effectiveness. Cool. There's a picture of it. Not too bad about that. Yeah, four, four rows, whatever. Um, so here's some um, characteristics. Hmm, accuracy, resolution, it's all very interesting. Ah, right, okay, here's a, here's a wiring diagram. They say to use a 5K resistor. Um, data, okay, cool. So we use a 5K resistor, we pull, we pull it up, basically, to 5 volts or 3.3, whatever we're using. Um, when connecting cable shorter than 20 meters, use 5K, yep. When it's longer than 20 meters, use an appropriate pull-up as needed. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. A capacitor valued 100 nanofarads can be added between there for power filtering. I don't think I need to do power filtering. Serial interface. Um, okay, well, I'll have a library to do this, so I'm, I'm not really worried about that. Uh, what else have we got? Nothing else, really. Nothing that important. Oh, what was that? light effect no it doesn't matter about that right so that's as, that's all we need to know at the moment now it's time to wire up so i'll just get a board let's use this one i'll get an arduino of course and 
I always um, recommend that people use the Nano, but if you're comfortable with another Arduino, that's cool. But for, if you're a beginner, I'd say use a Nano, because it's easier. I won't go into the reasons why at the moment, but yeah. Now I'm going to push the, um, the sensor in there, so the four pins just uh, sit nicely in the holes. Now, the first pin, uh, which is, well obviously pin 1, goes to um, 5 volts on the Arduino. And the next pin, which I'm going to use green, goes to, let's say, digital pin 2. Digital pin 2, because it's a digital device. Then, pin 3 is actually dead, it doesn't do anything. And pin 4, you put to ground. So very simple, VCC, sensor out, ground. Well, actually, VCC, sensor out, nothing, and then ground. Now, there's another thing we need to do. According to the data sheet, we need a 5K resistor, and this is a pull-up resistor. And, again, I won't go into the details of that, but basically, um, things don't work properly if you don't use the resistor. Um, I've heard that the, the newer ones actually have a pull-up resistor built into them, but this one doesn't. Basically, what we have to do is join VCC to sensor out. Just with a resistor, so, yep, easy as that. I'll just um, try and show you. In fact, I'll pull you out, I'll pull this out to show you. So I've got my wiring like that, as you can see, and I'll just push this in now. So, that's really easy, and that's how to wire up your, um, your sensor. So the next thing I'm going to do is plug this in, and then go over to my computer.